now. Okay, welcome back to Parsha Insights. This week's uh, Torah portion is Parsha Toldot. And we're going to jump right into it because we're talking about, about laughter. And I thought of, uh, you know, instead of going to the sources, we would just, everyone would go around, everyone tell your favorite joke, see how we can induce laughter and analyze laughter because we're talking about Rav Moshe Shapiro here, his Torah. And his Torah is never just about simple emotional responses, but there's always something deeper uh, about the concept of laughter. So let's take a look at where we are. Okay, so we've also, I've shared in the chat uh, the source sheet for those who wish to look online, but we're going to begin with the, as the story uh, begins, and we're about to talk about the next generation, right? We've already talked about Abraham, and last week we talked about, about Isaac. We spoke generally last week about the concept of the avot, of the forefathers, and what it means to be a forefather uh, specifically. But uh, this week we, we lead to the next generation with the twins being born, with Isaac and with, Yitz, with uh, Yaakov and Esau, Isaac and Rebecca's children. But we begin with this phrase, Ve'ele toldot Yitzchak ben Avraham. These are the Literally, I, I, and I apologize for the translations. It's it's translation uh, uh, selected that I selected with uh, in the Safari uh, website. But as uh, translating literally word for word, Ve'ela told Yitzchak ben Abraham. These are the generations. This is the story. This is the life of Isaac, the son of Abraham. Abraham holidet Yitzchak. Abraham begat Isaac. Abraham holidet Yitzchak. So the, the obvious question, which Rashi is going to, you know, maybe it's not so obvious, but, but uh, maybe it's become obvious because of the way that Rashi approaches it. Now, this is a very well-known Rashi, but uh, the, uh, Rashi points to this question. Look at this verse. This is the story of Isaac, the son of Abraham. What do we know at that point? That Abraham is Isaac's father. That's what we know. That's what the Torah told us in the first half of the verse. And then the second half of the verse says, Abraham begat Isaac. What do I need that for? I know that. I've already said that. So what do you need the second half of the verse, Abraham begat Isaac for? So Rashi, quoting a very famous Midrash, Rashi says, Why did I have to say that second part of the verse? Because the late the jesters, the jokers, the cynics the clowns. Of, of the generation. Yeah, maybe in modern Hebrew we would say the clowns of the generation were saying, Me Avimelech Nitabra Sarah. They were saying, you know what? Sarah became pregnant with who? With Avimelech. If you remember in chapter 20 of Genesis, if you'll recall, Avimelech takes Sarah captive. Avimelech. Uh, d- desires Sarah and the intervention that Avram has to make that has to happen there. Nothing happened. We're reassured that nothing untoward happened. And yet, because they spent that time together and compounded on that is that Abraham and Sarah tried to have children for many, many years and weren't able to. And suddenly Sarah gets pregnant. And so what happens? The jokers of the generation of that time said, that's not Abraham's child. That's Avimelech's child. Sarah became pregnant from Avimelech. Because so many years she was together with Abraham and, and, and couldn't get pregnant with him. So what did God do to respond to this claim? He shaped Isaac's Facial structure to be exactly like that of Abraham. You look at Isaac and you know exactly who his father is. And therefore, everyone testifies, everyone knows that it's Abraham who gave birth to, who begat, I use that word literally, gave birth. Abraham begat uh, is the father of, of Isaac. Because this is evidence. There's physical evidence imprinted within Isaac's face, within the, 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 the structure of Isaac's face, is a testimony as to who his father is. That's what Rashi says. 
And Rav Moshe Shapiro is going to zoom in. I use that word intentionally. <laughs> zoom in on who are these people? Late Sane Hador. Who are the jokers of the time? And I love the way he says it because he says, I think, what many of us are thinking. This joke is odd. I don't get it. I don't know if I get it very well. It's even somewhat silly. It still must consider that Sarah was 90 years old at the time that she conceived miraculously. Nonetheless, they claim that she conceived from Avimelech. Additionally, the claim is made by the jokers of the generation. Clearly, joking requires this assertion. Let's try to understand. And so the general question is, why is this the jokers of the generation? This isn't funny. If you would use a different, if you would use a different approach and say, because her, her enemies, because the people who disliked Abraham and Sarah, they're always opponents for any good initiative. They're always going to be opponents. And maybe they could say, but why is it the late Sane Hador? Why is it the jokers? Of the generation, Peter, were you going to make a comment? I don't understand why you, the word "joker" is being used. It's clearly malicious gossip, uh, a range of other things. But why the word "joker"? Exactly. So that's where Moshe. That question is what's driving the next the next uh, while that we have together. It's going to be that that exact question, Michael. You are still muted. Sorry, we can't hear. Oh, uh. now you now you should be able to hear me. Can yes. you hear me now, Rabbi? Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, Michael Chernick. I should have specified Michael Chernick. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I to the the word I I can see ch to 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 laugh. It could be a translation, but as Peter just said, I mean, this is a safari of translation. Uh, it could also have been separately translated as maybe the, uh, oh, those who question, those who doubted, although I could see where the joke translation comes in. Yeah, so in, in, in Hebrew, uh, a late or a late son does have that jester connotation, right? You could translate this as jester or joker or even cynic, maybe. That might be better. Yeah, right. cynic. But, but, but there's something, but there's something that's humorous about the word, meaning it, it's yeah. driving us in a certain direction. It's not their oivim, it's not their, their their enemies, it's not their detractors. That's not what it is. And I, and it would make much more sense if we would read it and we would use the Hebrew word for a detractor. We would just move on. We would have no questions. But this question, th this word, is very unusual because it's connected to laughter there's something jovial well, same about as the, word, name. Yeah. the word laid son great so we're going to get there it's not only Yitzchak's name but let's take a look house of laughter vateras not only Yitzchak's name so we're looking a little bit earlier vateras sarat ben hagar hamitzrit sarah going back to chapter 21 she saw the child of hagar the egyptian asher yaldal avraham mitzachek so uh, uh, Hagar, the maidservant, has the child Yishmael, and that child is Mitzachik. And Sarah sees this, and the loose translation is playing, and and Litzachik in Hebrew. So there's a linguistic similarity between to play and to laugh, right? Yeah. It's it's essentially the same word. Litzchok is to laugh, and Litzchok is to play. Schok. Schok. It's the same sadi or a sin. It's the same, it's the same word. Misachik to play. And litzachik. So um Sarah sees this and she's disturbed by it. And she sends away, sends away the child and sends away Hagar, right? That's where this is the beginning of that of that section. So what what was happening here? So Rashi again quoting the Midrash. Why would anyone care that the child is laughing? This is great. This is fun. This is funny. It's what a child is supposed to do. No, no, no. Rashi says there's a midrash here that there's something hidden behind this word litzachek. Mitzachek lashon avodazara. It's the language of idolatry. And it gives a proof text for where the word litzachek is used in the context of idolatry. Davar another interpretation. 
Lashon Gilui Arayot. It's immoral conduct. It's sexual immorality. Kamal Temel Litzachek B, because we have another uh, proof text where the word Litzachek is used within that context. Davar Acher, another in interpretation that this word Litzachek means Ritzicha, murder. And it uses the word Vayisachaku Lefanenu in the second book of Samuel. Um, as, a, as another proof text. So you have three opinions in Rashi, according to the Midrash. What does the laughter, the playful laughter of Yishmael, what does it really mean? It means idolatry. It means sexual immorality. It means murder. Either way, she saw him doing something morally reprehensible and demanded his exile from their home. That's what Sarah saw. So even before Isaac is born, we're seeing this concept of playing, of laughter, but it's in a very different, a very negative, negative context. And now, and right after that, by Tomel Abraham, she says, the verse, right, this was verse 9, and now we're at verse 10. She says, Sarah says to Abraham, Garesh ha'ama hazot vet you send out this woman and send out her her, her child for that son uh, shall not inherit shall not that slave shall not uh, share in the inheritance of my son Isaac. Yeah, Michael, Jernick. Now I now I, now that I look at the screen, I was uh, also looking at the Hertz for a moment. It speaks of making sport, but so does Ra but so does the Rashi. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Ramon uh, Shapiro says the following, we thus learn that in the house of Abraham, there was laughter. Yishmael was laughing, and Yitzchak is entirely a matter of laughter. And Sarah drives out the laughing Yishmael because his laughter opposes ours. The laughing son of the maidservant cannot inherit together with my son Yitzchak, whose name derives from schok, from laughter, as we'll see, as we'll see in, a few, in a few moments. Okay, as we'll see in, in, in the next source. So what he's setting up for us and how we're, we're, we're learning this and approaching it is, is that we have this concept of the late Sane Hador, of the jokers of the generation. Now, what do jokers have to say about what does laughter have anything to do and jokes have anything to do with Abraham and Sarah? And what he's going to present to us is that it has everything to do with Abraham and Sarah. And you have Yishmael, who has one form of laughter, and Yitzchak, who has another form of laughter. And we'll take a look at what that, uh, at the difference between Yishmael and Yitzchak in our tradition. Yes, uh, Becky, were you asking? Yes. Um, I want to go back to Rashi, where he talks about Giloy Arayot and Shikut Amim. Yes. And Gazara, those are three things that Yaharog Va'al Ya'avur. Exactly. In other words, it's three things together. It's not It's not one and two and three. It's all together that these are things that we have to die and we cannot uh, stay alive. These yeah, are yeah that, that's a great point that, that Rashi is basically presenting <laughs> to us uh, as to what Ishmael is doing. He's presenting the complete set of what's of the cardinal sins in Judaism, the sins that uh, one is not permitted to do even under the threat of, of, of death. Um, and that's a great point. And, and usually, you know, when we have three different opinions, we, uh, there's a, a way to go deeper into these opinions and say, why was one insufficient? Why was number one insufficient? Why would, and, and, and whenever somebody gives multiple reasons, you're always asking, which reason do they like the best? But it could be that we could step back here and say, you know, Rashi is presenting us a complete set of, uh, of these sins that, that Ishmael is doing, meaning Ishmael is the epitomization of evil and misbehavior, right? That is what we are saying about Yishmael, that he represents these three cardinal sins um, in, their, in their entirety, that you couldn't come up with a worse representation of, of Judaism and of Jewish law than, than, than Yishmael or with these three sins. Good, thank you. Um, Yitzchak's name, Vayipol Abraham al-Panav Vayitzchak. After he gets the promise of Isaac's, uh, of, of the birth, of the upcoming birth, that his wife will give birth to a son. And the first time we see Yitzchak is not as a name, but as a verb. 
that Abraham laughs. And he laughed. He laughed. Vayomer Belibo, he said to himself, Alaven mea shana yivaled vim sarah bat tishim shana teled. I'm 100. My wife is 90. Can we really have a child together? Is that really going to happen? Vayomer Avraham Elohim lu Yishmael yichye lefanecha. What about Yishmael? Vayomer Elohim aval sarah ishtachai yoledet lechaben. Vekarata shmo Yitzchak. And you're going to call his name Yitzchak. Vakimoti et buti to ito levrit olam lezaro acharav. And with him, I will, uh, I will be, um, I, I will have the covenant with him. We see as well that the concept of uh, Yitzchak and Yitzchak are together. Laughter and playing are kind of interchangeable. And in fact, in Tehillim, the name is changed in in in, in a certain uh, place. I'm sorry, I should have taken out this uh, this source because it's contained in the next source. Zacharion vitod levart siva le'elaf dor. God is mindful of the covenants. And it asher karatat Abraham, the covenant that made with Abraham, ushvuato le Yishak, and this Kai swore to Isaac an oath to Isaac. Vayamidel Yaakov lechok the Israel b'itolam. I will give the land of Canaan. So, what is this Yitzchak and Yishak? This laughter, this playfulness. In Breshit Rabbah, there's a uh, the midrash that. Why did Avraham, in addition, this is an additional deeper meaning, because it's pretty clear that Yitzchak is named because of the word Yitzchak, because of laughter. But the Midrash has another interpretation. Vayikra Avraham et Shein Beno, he called his son Yitzchak. So what does the Midrash say? Yatsa Chok. What does that mean? Yitzchak can also be read as these two words. Yatsa Chok Leolam. Part of the world. Yatsa to, to the world. What is Yatsa? Yatsa Came out of a piece of the world. Yeah, a chok in Hebrew is hey, a hey, statue. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Exactly. So it's a type of Hebrew law. It's, a type, it's exactly. It's a type of law. Chukim is exactly. Chukat. Uh, chok. That's the nature. Yatsa chok. So there's something about Isaac, about his name, that relates to the concept of law, of lawfulness, of obedience. Yatsachok. And for for a moment, yeah. Rabbi, I was just going to say that makes perfect sense because he's the line on the development of Judaism. And while it's obviously long before the Torah, he's still is setting up certain principles uh, that are going to be incorporated later on. So that that makes totally perfect sense. Exactly. And we're going to take a a quick time out now for a linguistic break. Shouldn't say a time out. It's all consistent. But for a linguistic break, because, uh, and I love when Ramosha Shapiro does this, he's going to contrast Yishmael and Yitzchak, and he's going to talk about the different natures. Now that we've kind of understood a little bit more about their names, now we're going to understand the different nature. Hera Adam, speaking about Yishmael and the, the general interpretation, he will be a wild person. Yado bakol v'yad kol bo v'apne kol echad yishkon. But this descriptive term, he will be a wild ass is the way that it's translated. That's what Yishmael is going to be. And we see this as well, a slightly different spelling in, in the book of Yirmiyahu. You know, it ends with a hey. But pere limud midbar, just like a wild ass is accustomed to the wilderness, right? That's the idea, the idea of wildness that Yishmael is described with wildness. And look what Ramosha Shapiro says. I love this. He says, Yishmael is uncultured and cannot be cultured. He's a wild man and he always goes past his boundaries. And look at the way he's described. This is what teaches us a little bit about the character of Yishmael. This meaning spans all root words that begin with the letters Peresh to the very last one. Every single word, he said, making a very a very dramatic claim. Every root in Hebrew that you see that begins with the letters Peresh means something beyond boundaries, breaking through boundaries. Harod, 
is to divide. Parosh or paras, either one, will be to separate. Parot, parat, is to segment. Right? Like a, uh, I mean, each one of these, we could go through a thousand different examples of how these used uh, words are used, but parat, to segment, from the Hebrew word, uh, I mean, there are many of them, but the right. he, in, in Hebrew, the word pruta. You know, pruta is like, a, is, is a small, it's a coin, it's something. Yeah, exactly. Uh, parach is to crush. Para, uh, para from pru uravu is to procreate. Lifroach, parach is to blossom. Pricha, lifroz, paraz is to open. Lifros is to spread. Lifrots, parats is to breach. Hara, priya, disorder, breaking. All of these words that start with peresh have to do, all these words denote a thing that goes outside of a framework. It separates from where it should be. It surpasses its limits. It breaches its boundaries. It proceeds to other places. It spreads out over the area. Obviously, this is also the signification of the word hara, as we saw, v'hu yepera adam, that Yishmael is described as one who does not respect boundaries, one who is constantly striving to go to surpass its own its own limits. Here, please. there's a counter argument. Mm -hmm. uh, wild is one of three natures. Mm. There is wilderness, landscape, and garden. Garden is man's attempt to manage nature mm -hmm. uh, in a, an aesthetic manner. Landscape is how man derives from nature. And wilderness, to a certain extent, is free nature. So the idea that the pay resh is indicative of only negative qualities of wildness in its negative sense does not account for wildness in its positive light. I, I, I love that. Thank you. Yes. Yes. And I, I appreciate that, uh, that contribution and knowing the expertise that it comes from is, is, is very meaningful. Um, yes, we are using wildness in one particular context here, and it's a destructive, it's a destructive wildness. That's, that's pretty clear that Ishmael is being described, not in something that's to be celebrated, not in the wildness that might be associated with the world just being let to run without human intervention or whatever it might be, a wild, what we would call a, a you know, wild flowers, a wild field, wilderness, um, it is in the terms of something to be celebrated, but it is something uh, specifically uh, uh, destructive with, uh, with Yishmael. Um, for the sake of time, there's a, basically, there is a Zohar, which has another word play on Yitzchak. So not for the sake of time. So there's a Zohar that has another word play on Yitzchak, and it calls, without going into uh, the details of the Zohar, of which I understand a very small percentage. I will. I will. Uh, I, I will uh, confess. Uh, confess that it would take me much more time to dive into the Zohar uh, in, in terms of the meanings, not the literal meanings of the words, but in terms of the deeper meanings of what's being described with the uh, le left side and the right side and the symbolism. And uh, however, the name Yitzchak is reinterpreted in a different way. Hitzchai. Hitzchai means literally a lifespan. Hits is a limit. And if you look at those, uh, chai, of course, is life. And if you rearrange the four letters, you get the word Yitzchak. And so based on this, Rav Moshe Shapiro says the following. Contrast this to what we said about Yishmael. All words that begin with the letters kits contained in Yitzchak convey the reverse. An end, a limit, a ketsev. Katsar is short. Sat, sum. All these words denote a thing that's within its boundaries and doesn't go outside of them. So, 
Here Adam versus Ketz Chai, Yitz Chak. They are opposites. One is disorderly, but for the same reason he became this way, the other places himself on the reverse path. He places with him, uh, himself within a rhythm, within a Ketzev in Hebrew. That's the rhythm of Yitzchak's life. This is what the sages are telling us. Yitzchak meant Yatsa Chok. A law went forth. To set a law means to establish boundaries. Yitzchak limits himself in direct contrast to Yishmael. Yitzchak perceives his existence as that of a created, be created being, and he has nothing but the intent of the one who created, who created him. Okay, so that is one difference that we are setting forward. Again, just to recap for a moment, we started with the jokers, with the jesters who were opposing and questioning where Isaac came from. And the way that we're analyzing this is looking at the difference between Yishmael and Yitzchak because our starting point is laughter. Our starting point are those jokers and the laughter that existed in that generation, the laughter in the house of Abraham and Sarah, and how different it was, how the laughter of Yishmael is the laughter of, well, of evil, of those cardinal sins. And even more than that, it's the laughter, and we're understanding a deeper level now, it's the laughter of breaking through boundaries. It's the laughter of not respecting the limits that are placed on oneself by, by law, by societal norms and expectations, by what makes for a a civil and lawful society. And Isaac is the opposite. Isaac is limitations. Isaac is law. Yatsa, chok, the law has emerged. When Isaac was, was born, not only it was, was it Yitzchak, not only was it laughter of disbelief, but it also was, uh, was a concept of, of lawfulness. Um, okay, ready In to move on? Ways in some ways, he's also, uh, to, to to an extent, he's 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 a, uh, opposite to his father, because Abraham was mm having -hmm. a and he basically is more of a din person. He's more of a of a limiting person. Right. So, his father. His father. I mean, in the in the uh, traditional um, characteristics, his father is is chesed, is pure kindness, and Yitzchak is gvura. Is kind of strength or deen or law. Yeah, you're right. They are very, very different. And we often see them as coming together as Yaakov, as the emet, as the truth of, uh, of Yaakov. Okay, we're going to take this uh, one step one step further and look at the difference between Yishmael's laughter and Isaac's laughter. And that will all, I hope, we'll be able to put it together with a nice, nice neat little bow at the end. Uh, the jokers of the generation are the ones who represent, so who is, uh, who are these jokers? They represent the honor of the entire generation. They disgrace the entire concept. They declared that Sarah conceived from Avimelech. In other words, it was unfeasible to them that Yitzchak could be the continuation of Avraham. Avraham's continuation must be Yishmael. Hence, Yitzchak is not the offspring of Avraham. So just reiterating like what they were actually saying, this wasn't a joke. This wasn't a, uh, this wasn't, you know, there was no punchline here. There was no laughter to this joke. What they were saying was something was a fundamental attack on the continuity of Abraham. What they were saying is that the line of Abraham, that this child's birth has nothing to do with the line of Abraham. Abraham's line goes through Yishmael, goes through the Mitzachek, goes through the one who doesn't respect boundaries and limits. This child is somebody else's child. This has nothing to do with the line line of Abraham. Susan Stromberg, I see you have your hand raised, please. You're, you're, uh, you're muted. We can't, we can't hear you. It's muted. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no problem. Okay, so uh, let's go on uh, for a moment to the concepts 
of okay who laughs last so just to note there's a beautiful going back to rashi on a very familiar verse shema yisrael adonai eloheinu adonai echad hero israel the lord is our god the lord is one or as the translation here says god alone what are we referring to why do we need to say god is our god why can't we just say god is one why do we need to say God is our God? It almost seems as if we're acknowledging a different reality. Are there other gods? What do we need to say? God is our God. Are there somebody else your God that God should be my God? So Rashi says, answering this question, God is our, uh, is our God now. And the concept of now being in a world that has many gods or that has the awareness of many gods. Hashem Echad. God will one day be the one God. Meaning, it's not saying that there are other gods. It's just saying that the world believes there are other gods. But one day, the world will believe that God is one. And so, Shema Yisrael, according to this interpretation of Rashi, Shema Yisrael is speaking not from the perspective of the Jewish people, but from the perspective of the world. That God is the God of the Jews. There are other gods. But one day, God will be universally and uniformly recognized as the one God. Meaning there's a different reality between what's happening now in the world and what will one day happen. This is what we talk about when we talk about Yimot HaMashiach. We talk about the messianic reality. We talk about one day a truth being universally acknowledged and accepted by people around the world by not only being the truth of the Jews, by not only being the belief of the Jews, but by being the accepted reality for uh, for the entire uh, for the entire world. That's and that's going to be the framework for how we're going to look at the laughter of Yishmael versus Yitzchak. In other words, God's sovereignty over us in the present is what will be revealed to all in the future. Our great and decisive quarrel with Yishmael, the Yitzchak Yishmael quarrel, revolves around laughter. And the focal point of quarrel lies in the words themselves. Sarah saw the verse that we saw, remember? Saw the child Yishmael laughing. Mitzachek, which is a present participle, which is in the present. Laughter in the present tense. In contrast, the name Yitzchak, you remember your Hebrew grammar? Yitzchak, he will, will laugh. laugh. In the future tense, Yishmael mitzachek. Yishmael laughs now, but the true laughter is with the one who laughs last. The laughter of the ultimate purpose belongs to Yitzchak. He will laugh. And so, in many ways, and I, this, you know, Rav Moshe Shapiro opened my eyes to this. This is extraordinary that when Avraham gave the name, when the, when the Torah presents this name Yitzchak. It's in conversation with Yishmael's activities. Yishmael Mitzachek, Isaac Yitzchak. Yitzchak, Yitzchak, Yitzchak. You know, Yishmael is currently laughing, and Isaac will have the last, the last laugh. Yitzchak, he will laugh. I love this. And looking at the blessings moving forward, the blessing. I'm going to take this at at a, at a, at a, at a, a little bit of a faster a faster clip. But there's a Vilna Gaon, a teaching of the Vilna Gaon, at the beginning of Migilat Esther. I could not find this in English and unfortunately ran out of time in translating it. But he says, basically, with every creation, haklipa kadma lepri, the, um, with every creation, the klipa, the, uh, the, the, the skin, the external, comes before the actual fruit itself. So the peel comes before the fruit. And what he's meaning, what this means, in a sense, the fruit is the essence. The peel is not. But with every creation, what you see first is not what was meant to be, is not what the ideal is. That's what the Vilna Gaon is saying. Just like Jacob and Esau, who came first? Who arrived first? Esau. Even though, and now the sages have this concept, which is not meant to be a biological concept. And please uh, understand, 
uh, take a, take this in, in in the spirit in which it's offered. The sages have um, have the concept basically with the birth of the twins of Philo. You know, Philo, first in, last out, meaning the twin who was born second is actually what? The firstborn. That, that's the concept that they use because it must be that that's the way the conception happened because the way they grew was with Esau on the outside, Yaakov on the inside. It must be that Yaakov was conceived for whatever whatever that means, but in the conceptualization of the womb as uh, almost as, as an elevator or something like or as a room, first in, last out. Um, arrived first, but that doesn't mean that he was created first, and that doesn't mean that he was the purpose of creation. And why did he come out first? Because Esav took this world when the when they divided the worlds and said, Okay, you twins, there are two worlds there's this world and there's the world to come. Esav came and 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 put his claim in this world, and Yaakov in the world to come. Um, uh, okay, so that's uh, the general concept that we're working with, is that, uh, is that Esav, is that uh, Yaakov represents the ideal, Esav, or the ideal continuation of Isaac, and therefore of Abraham, and Esav, even though he arrived first, wasn't the ideal because sometimes or often, as the Vilna Gaon says, the peel comes first, the external, the superficial comes first, and then comes the essence. Veru'uya haya Yisrael. So looking at how, how he finishes off uh, the comment, veru'uya hayu Yisrael. Kum ba'olam hazeh. And according to, uh, to kind of a, a, as it, as the chips fell, and as the world was supposed to be, Israel, meaning representing Jacob and the line of Abraham, the, mon the, the monotheistic line, was not supposed to have any stake in this world. This world is entirely for Esau. This world is entirely for Yishmael. Jacob's world, Isaac's world, that's the spiritual world. But what happened? Rak shekadam v'lakach mimenu ha but Jacob took the firstborn status from Esav. And on the day that Abraham died, that Jacob uh, cooked the, the, the lentil soup. And basically what he is saying is that Jacob is making a sacrifice to have some type of claim in this world, which we're going to see and which we see in the stealing of the blessings. And look at how Rav Moshe Shapiro brings all of this together. He says, if Yaakov had not taken the blessings from Yitzchak, his existence in this world would have been unfeasible. He simply would have no place here. This world belongs entirely to Esau. Yaakov had taken the world to come as his share. And he can't live in this world, except in as much as Esav grants him space, in as much as Esav allows, because this world belongs to Esav. He can lick the crumbs off Esav's table by taking the blessings. He received the ability to live in this world as Yaakov, as himself. The idea of a spiritual being existing within a physical space is something that it, it doesn't fit. It's not the way it was intended to be. This is how we exist in this world as Esav does. It is heretical to presume so. Our only option is to live in this world in the framework of the blessings of Isaac. This alone is what enabled and enables us to exist here. To the extent that we leave the framework of the blessings, to the same extent that we enter an area that's not ours, an area where we have no right, uh, no right to exist. I'm going to skip a little bit to the end here because um, Rav Moshe Shapiro uh, speaks about within the, the uh, so this is basically the blessing of Yitzchak that is given to, um, that is given to, to, uh, to Isaac. Um, and he says, right? He says to, uh, the, the Isaac <laughs> it says to Jacob, Isaac says to his son, Jacob, Abraham, my father Abraham, the blessing will go to you and to your children, right? 
and he sent Jacob off. And then when Esau saw that Isaac had blessed him, uh, yeah, so Isaac had, had, that Jacob had been sent off to take a wife. Uh, then Isaac himself goes, uh, then Esau himself goes and takes a wife from the children of Yishmael. So there becomes, uh, there develops a connection between Esau and Yishmael, between these two generations. So within the family of Abraham, you have Isaac and then you have Yishmael, you have Jacob and you have Esau, and there's an alliance between the two. There's an alliance between Isaac and Jacob. That's the continuity of the blessing. And there's an alliance between Esau and Yishmael, representing the opposite of that blessing, the opposite of monotheism. And what Rav Moshe Shapiro says, in a fear, it is a fierce struggle over the heritage of Abraham. If the jokers of the generation prevail, the glory of heaven will not be realized in this world. Then Yishmael laughs. If Yitzchak prevails, the glory of heaven will be revealed in the world. It truly is a serious matter, he says. This idea of laughter, the idea of Yishmael, the idea of Isaac, the idea of laughter within the house of Abraham is not funny. The idea of the jokers who are saying that Isaac is not part of Abraham's family, that's not funny. That's not the kind of laughter that makes one, you know, that, that's humorous laughter. This is a dangerous kind of laughter. This is truly a serious a serious matter, matter. One final source. The child grew up talking about Yitzchak, about Isaac, going back a little bit. Isaac's birth, he grew up, he was weaned, and Abraham held a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. The Midrash and the Talmud is going to look at that word for to be weaned. Anyone see another Hebrew word? There, that is familiar. There are a few within that uh, within that context. Camel. camel. So the camel. word for, for camel, camel, gamal, is oh, there for, and for sure. Sorry, what was the other word? Ligmol. Ligmol meaning? To wean. To, to wean in this context, but also ligmol oh, it's another is, finish. is associated with with uh, the object of ligmol is chesed. Yes. It's the verb in Hebrew. There is, in English, we have, we have the general, in, in English, we have these general words. You say when you, when you do a kindness for someone else, you say you do a kindness, you perform a kindness, but those are such general verbs. What a general transitive verb, to do a kindness, to perform. The word does is one of the least descriptive words in in language, couldn't imagine a less specific word than to do, to perform. So this in is like Hebrew, Kimilur chasadim. In Hebrew, there is a specific verb associated with the word chesed. Ligmol, gomol chasadim. You don't do a kindness. There, you. There's no translation for it. But you are gomil a kindness. That's the, that's that's the Hebrew. That's the nature of the Hebrew. So look at the Talmud which says, uh, sometimes he said, well, what is the meaning of that is written? And the child grew and was weaned, Vayigamal. In the future, the Holy One, blessed be he, will prepare a feast for the righteous on that day that he extends his mercy to the descendants of Isaac. Meaning, Isaac represents for us this moment in the future, the moment of Hashem Echad, the moment of Isaac emerging victorious. There's going to be a battle. There's going to be a battle of civilizations. There's going to be a battle in which the descendants of Isaac and Jacob, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the descendants, the true descendants, the, the descendants who have taken this tradition, the monotheistic tradition, on the one hand, who are saying, who have been saying all along, Hashem Elokeinu, the Lord is our God, and the world will one day say Hashem Echad. That one day that they will laugh, will laugh last. That's the idea that's presented by Rav Moshe Shapiro, that this laughter that is pointed to by the jesters of, of the generation, that this laughter is the ultimate laughter. 
that this is the laughter and this is the race to the end and the laughter of who is going to laugh last who is going to be there around at that meal when god makes a suda when god makes a feast for all of the righteous people when god connected to the weaning of isaac the same word when god performs kindness for all of the righteous people who is going to be laughing in that moment is it going to be the ones represented by Yishmael and Esav, Mitzachek, who is laughing? Or is it going to be the ones represented by Yitzchak that one day he will laugh? And that's part of our work and that's part of our prayer uh, is, is to capture that laughter of, of Yitzchak, which is a laughter of the future, which is a laughter of a world of, of truth. Michael. Michael Turner. I was just, yeah, I was just wondering, Rabbi, does Gomel come out of that same rote? As in, in oh, uh, the, the Gomel. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Gomel, in the full phrase, it's the blessing that said when one experiences a dangerous uh, right. moment or goes through a life threatening situation or a situation that historically was life threatening. And the phrase is Hagomel Lachayavin Tov. God is Gomel Tov, basically. So it's, it's a, it, it's not Gomel Chesed, but it's Gomel Tov. It's, it's performing an act of goodness. Thank you, God, for having done this act of goodness for me, but not using the word done, using the word Gomel. Yeah, great point. Birkat HaGomel. Wonderful. So uh, we will close with any questions or comments as we've taken the journey. Just to say, um, Rav Moshe, just to take a step back for a moment, Rav Moshe Shapiro uh, never wrote in his own lifetime. He, uh, according to, to the forward of one of the works about him, one of the books about him, he believed that writing the lectures, writing up the lectures that he had already delivered was a waste of his creative energies because he had still had more to think of and more to teach up and more to teach. And so he never wrote his own lectures. And so his students had tried, and this is part of the effort in looking at the works of his students and trying to piece together some of the lectures he gave. There was another lecture on uh, Toldot, which maybe we'll save for next year, which was on the concept of laughter. What is laughter? Laughter in general is a response of surprise. Of I was expecting one thing, another, another thing arrived, and therefore I laugh. And the different components of laughter and what it means to truly laugh and to truly be surprised, to have expectations in one direction and to be and to, to deal with life bringing us in a different direction and how to respond to that with laughter. It's a beautiful piece, but uh, we'll have to save that for uh, for one year from now. For Parsha Toldo, it's in our fourth go-around of, uh, of Parsha Insights. Um, in the meantime, we will close the session now. Wish everyone a Shabbat Shalom, and we'll see you next week. Same time, same channel. Looking forward. Enjoy your wedding tonight. Thank you, Thank you. Rabbi. And a happy Thank day, you. Rabbi. Thank you.